and now in conclusion, we, we look ahead to 2016 and, you know, we, we have highlighted so many moments of success and memorable moments of 2015. What do you anticipate from 2016, knowing that there's still a lot of moving parts here in terms of players coming in and training camp and, you know, what's going on with other teams in the league? And sure, we didn't expect 2015 to go the way that we did see. Um, but projections for, for this club in its third season in the North American Soccer League in 2016. Well, I think it'd be wildly optimistic of me and incredibly early for me to suggest that they might repeat what they were able to accomplish. You'd love to see it, and it's certainly possible, but that's a, that's a tough Cinderella run to, to repeat in back-to-back -back years. That said, I expect a team that's still going to be hard to score against. Uh, as I said before, there's most of the back end coming back with uh, Romel Pezer in goal. Uh, and three of their four defenders from back from last season. And then, yeah, there's moving parts still. There's spots to fill out. Uh, Paul Deglish is, is similar in the sense he, Mark DeSantos had a 4-4-3 formation and, or yeah, 4-4-3 four, four, formation. And, and Paul Deglish said he has something that's more of an adaptable version of that same formation where he'll maybe get his wingers that maybe would have played out wide, wider at, under Mark DeSantos will come in and provide a bit more support behind that top striker. So there'll be little changes like that, little ways to try to, to try to get this team running under a new coach's system. Uh, but I wouldn't expect to see maybe wildly different uh, tactics coming from him. They wanted a coach that was gonna come in here and then not change the entire system too dramatically because that could have disastrous effects too. So you're gonna see some tweaks to, to what you saw before, obviously some new faces, but a team that, that should be trying to play the same way and, and, and still be that, the kind of team that they've been for two years. Sanisha, looking at what the team achieved in the stands, in the community, there were fantastic crowds at TD Place in 2015. And, you know, Fury FC really kind of got a foothold in the sports market, in the, in the soccer market, as a, Ottawa's professional soccer team. Uh, how does that move forward into 2016 now that they've had two good years kind of under the, their belt playing in a, in a state-of-the-art facility here in downtown Ottawa? Well, the fan base has grown a lot in the past two years, starting from when they played at Carlton and some a few thousands of people in the stands to over 6,000 plus uh, during a bunch of games this year at TD Place. Uh, that was incredible. And of course, like this season helped a lot to bring new people, new faces around here because a winning team always attracts more fans. That's, of course, a logical situation. So it's going be hard next year for sure but I know that at the beginning of the season people will become people will uh, try to support this team uh, there's still a lot of guys coming back I think it's a really important fact that they will be they were able to sign Romeo Alpizer, uh, Rafael Alves, Colin Falvey and Mason Trafford we know there's there's a say that goes uh, uh, with uh, offense win games and defense wins championships. So when you have those three, those four guys in the back, that's going to be a, a strong core for next season, starting from there. And then you can build up front. There's still a lot of rooms and spots to be filled. I know that the Paul has some contacts too. He's going to pull some strings to bring some guys here. Who knows? Maybe we're going to have some better guys than the ones that were already there. That's going to be hard because they proved a lot in the past two years. But we never know. Like Julian de Guzman coming here to Ottawa last year who would have thought that that would have been possible so there's a lot of things possible and I think the future for this team is really bright same question for both of you Sanisha we'll start with you first what's the one thing that needs to happen in 2016 for Fury FC to find success I think they need to find a, a strong number nine, a real pure striker that can put some goals consistently on a consistent basis, game after game after game to not go on like cold streaks. I think that's the most important thing for me. Chris? Yeah, I mean, obviously goal scoring is key, but what they're going to have to do first, because you saw the way it was so key for them this season, is figure out their plan for the midfield. When you lose a guy like Richie Ryan, you lose a guy like Ubi Peripovic, you need to come up with a new plan because the midfield is the way and the way Richie Ryan played his game, he made things tick from, from the middle of the pitch and he had a calmness about him. He could slow the pace of a game down or speed it up kind of at will depending on what the situation called for. So they're going to need to figure out who's going to step into that role. Uh, you saw guys like Mauro Ustaki last year as a young midfielder uh, and a Canadian midfielder at that stepping in to that role when Richie was unavailable or hurt and did a, a, a great job. So they're going to have to see what they've got in the system, what they've got potentially as, as signing options and, and who can step into some what are going to be really big boots to fill. So the midfield, I think, is going to be the, the big key going forward. Uh, really appreciate your coverage in 2015 and uh, we look forward to, to another season of memories in 2016. So thanks for your time. Thank you.
Been Chris Hoffley from the Ottawa Sun and Sinisa Shindick from Unique FM as we recap 2015 looking ahead to 2016 during this holiday season. Thanks for tuning in here on OttawaFuryFC.com. It's a beautiful game for a reason and that was a beautiful game here today.